All right, guys, how's it going? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday, and as you can see from the beginning of this episode, we are working on one of the EDC Camp knives. Now, this particular one right here is the one that was sadly the one that developed a crack. So this was the one that was made out of steel that Matt Rich sent me, and uh, this was like the collaboration knife. Whenever I did the heat treat process, we developed a crack that went from this pinhole right here up to the plunge line, this little line that's right here, if you can even see that. Developed a crack right there, kind of a weird spot for a crack, but I wanna go ahead and finish the knife because it's so high up on the blade and go ahead and test it in this episode. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put some handle scales on it, which I already got cut down and set up to glue up on here. We're going to profile the handle, put an edge on it, and then use and abuse it. We're going to baton it through some wood, we're going to make some feather sticks, we're going to start a fire in this episode, and I'm going to cut on some tree limbs and do some things that I would typically do with my little backyard knives that I have, and uh, we're going to see what we can do to hurt this knife. Now, am I going to be like hammering it through an ammo can? No, I'm not. Am I going to be like trying to chop concrete with it or, you know, punch it through a quarter inch steel plate? No. Because you wouldn't do that with the EDC knife or a camp knife in general, so I'm not going to do that in this. I'm going to put it through the spaces that it would typically have in a campsite situation. Now, I might smash it on some antler. We'll see how that goes. But, for right now, we need to go ahead and put the handle on it, profile the handle, put an edge on it, and you know, have some fun. So, let's go ahead, let's jump into that, and let's get this thing knocked out. So we've got the handle glued on there, and I went ahead and cut off the excess on the pins on the porter band saw. Now what we need to do is just do a simple profile on this. I'm not going to do anything super complicated. It's just going to be a pretty simple profile to be able to hold it real well. So we're going to get that done. I'm going to grind down the sides, make them nice and smooth, and then we'll just start profiling it. Basically I'm just going to put a nice round on it. There'll probably be a little bit of contouring in the little finger choil area, but nothing too crazy. But we're just going to make it nice and comfortable.
good old paper towel tube cut. Hasn't been cut yet for some of those skeptics out there. I said I'll cut through cardboard. Let's go. Uh, let's go try some wood. All right. So what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to be using these two logs, of course, to do the fire that we're going to be doing, and we're going to be just lighting the fire my my fire pit that's in my backyard. But we're going to go ahead and take the bark off this. This is birch. I'm going to use it for the fire. I use it in my fireplace and then of course in my fire pit. Uh, this is nice because it burns nice and hot. But we're going to be taking the bark off that and then we're going to go ahead and baton this through this. And uh, it's pretty hard wood, but uh, we're going to baton through it and break one of these down. And then we're going to go ahead and light it. I'm going to be using, of course, the bark for tinder plus what I use here is one of my favorite things is a dryer lint that goes out of your lint trap from your dryer. This is free kindling, and uh, I keep a lot of this stuff. And then of course, we're just gonna use some all-weather crazy matches. These are some of the, some of the biggest matches you could, possibly, you could possibly get. But I keep these in my, my bug out bag and one of my EDC bags that I take with me whenever I go on long car trips. But we're gonna break this stuff down. I'm gonna take you down here and gonna go ahead and get after it of course I do suggest that if you're gonna do this if you're gonna be making a fire that you actually have a hatchet with you I keep one of these in my truck and then I have one that goes with me on my long distance trips and stuff like that because this thing's very light weighs almost nothing it's just all the weights pretty much in the head of it little Fiskars made in Finland cool little hatchet I just suggest that if you're gonna be planning to make a fire, that you have a hatchet with you. Don't try and depend 100% on batoning a knife through a log to be your only source of making firewood. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do for this, like I said, we're gonna take the bark off of these.
Wow. Exfoliated and everything. Hmm. Say that's working. Now, I'd say out of this whole entire ordeal, the most comical part is the fact that I made a fire when it was like 97 degrees outside. So that's kind of goofy. Definitely didn't need it for anything other than this video and showing y'all whether this worked or not. But there you go. Now, I would say that this was definitely a success. That crack has not moved at all. It was right here has not moved at all and that was going through a whole entire log of birch that had a whole bunch of knots in it and everything and it's still razor sharp i mean that's what it looks like after being baton through all that wood nothing there and that was beating the heck out of it with a two by four and there was points where only just like enough of the tip to be able to catch it was sticking through and I was hammering down on just the tip just the tip so when it boils down to it a fine edge on pops 8670 even with a little crack in it is definitely gonna gonna handle its business really really happy with this now the finish that's on here all that is was up to 320 or 400 grit and then I heat treated it, tempered it, and then pretty much acid etched it. That's the, the finish that's on it right now. And you can't see any marks from baton in through that wood. Still has its <laughs> nice-ish finish. It looks cool, but I think it's gonna weather really well. And I am very, very pleased with some Pops 8670. And I will have this knife with me for a very long time. I'm not gonna be selling it. It's just gonna be one of my knives that I use whenever I go uh, 
camping or if I'm going to be just working in the backyard or working in the shop, that's going to be the new shop knife with some Pops 8670. Now, I will tell you this, I'm going to reiterate it. If you're going to go out camping or you, you plan on making a fire, bring a hatchet. Will this work in a pinch? Yes, but this is not a hatchet. Do not rely on this as your sole tool for chopping down trees and breaking down wood and all that stuff, you know? This, <laughs> will it do it? Yes, but if you're gonna do something, use a purpose-built tool. But in a pinch, if you needed to use this, you could, and uh, it definitely works. And it definitely creates some, uh, some nice kindling. And uh, if you didn't take anything really away from this video, at least take away the, the dryer lint for the nice little fire starter. A dryer lint is awesome. If you don't have that in your bug out bag, if you don't have that in an EDC bag, toss it in there. Go get some dryer lint out of the dryer, put it in a Ziploc bag, toss it in there. It's better than a lot of things that you can start a fire with. Guys, there we go. Another one in the books. I'll probably go ahead and make a sheath for this. So I'll have a, I don't know, if y'all want me to do a video on making a sheath for this, let me know, and I will. It'll probably be a leather sheath. You let me know. Comment section down below. Guys, that's the end of this one. If y'all would, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I'll catch y'all next time.